Hi, I'm Martin Sweatman, and in this video I'm going to continue my review of the Younger Dryas Impact Debate Research. Now, so far we've covered the published research from the original Firestone et al. paper in 2007 through to the middle of 2017 using the new bibliography at the Cosmic Tusk website. And we've seen that the Younger Dryas Impact Theory is supported by overwhelming evidence, especially a platinum layer coincident with a layer of nano diamonds and impact spherules has been found across North America. And this boundary layer extends across Greenland, uh, Western Europe and into the Near East. Now the timing of this platinum layer nearly 13,000 years ago makes it very likely it was the trigger for the Younger Dryas mini ice age that lasted around 1300 years. And we saw in the last video, there is good evidence it was also the trigger for significant megafaunal extinctions and the end of the Clovis culture. Although no doubt these effects will continue to be debated and the precise mechanism of the Younger Dryas cooling uh, remains unclear. So we'll finish off 2017 in this video, uh, which means we'll be reviewing these papers here. Now we've already reviewed the Moore et al. paper and we're leaving all the Mahaney group papers until the end. And I won't review the paper by Zamora um, either. Again, like Burchard's work up here, uh, it's geological in nature and out of my comfort zone. But you can find some very nice videos by Zamora himself on YouTube, uh, so take a look at those. So the next paper that we'll look at is this one from core members of the Comet Research Group. So they take another look at the well-known deposits of megafaunal remains locked within uh, the muddy permafrost located in uh, Alaska and Yukon territories on the North American continent. Uh, and these are very similar to the same kinds of deposits found across Siberia. Um, I expect you've seen the pictures of mammoth tusks and bones recovered from this permafrost where it's begun to melt. And you can see a few, a few of those pictures here, these so-called boneyards. Now the existence of these remains in many cases has been something of a mystery with uh, several authors linking them with cosmic impacts or other extraordinary events in prehistory. The conventional explanation though, which always tries to avoid these kinds of dramatic event, suggests there's nothing unusual about the preponderance of these remains. Apparently, the massive amount of megafauna preserved in the permafrost died of natural causes. That's the conventional claim. But death by natural causes or by human hunting seems an unlikely explanation for all the many remarkable cases of huge broken bones and shattered carcasses and often their apparent rapid freezing and preservation. Uh, some car carcasses, for example, were clearly frozen whole while still bleeding or while still having undigested food in their stomachs, suggesting immensely rapid and massive change in temperature. And they're often too fat to have died during the winter. Together with many cases of huge internal injury and disarticulated and broken bones, uh, and their burial mixed with fractured logs and branches and tree trunks and copious amounts of silt, um, cosmic impacts seem a distinct possibility, although conventionally this is dismissed because it's apparently known that such impacts can't happen. And I've never killed anyone, right? Well, this is just some of the context for this paper, uh, which um, these guys write about in their introduction here. So they focus on the specific cases of Alaska and the Yukon boneyards, um, and, and they look especially at the sediment trapped within some of these bones, like within the skulls and so on. And essentially what they find are elevated levels of platinum and what clearly look to be more, look, look like more um, cosmic impact spherules. 
So this suggests that the cosmic impact explanation is correct for at least some of these remains. Uh, so you might think this is more evidence in favour of the Younger Dryas impact. Well, the radiocarbon dating of these remains is very interesting. They find a wide range of dates for these remains from 44 to 18,000 years ago. So it appears that there were many episodes of cosmic impact that helped to wipe out the Paleolithic megafauna. And perhaps then the, the Younger Dryas impact was only one of the more major and recent such events. Now, critics might seize upon the impossibility of the occurrence of many such events, but we know such multiple events are completely consistent. Indeed, they're a prediction of co coherent catastrophism. And remember, this is the name for Kluber Napier's theory of a giant comet trapped within the inner solar system, gradually fragmenting and breaking up, causing havoc on Earth. Indeed, it's only in the context of coherent catastrophism that the Younger Dryas impact itself makes any sense. And remember also the black mats found by Pigatti et al. Uh, in 2012. So that's video four in this series, whose widespread of dates was used to deny a cosmic impact caused by those authors. So it's clear that this work, they're position is not tenable. Now at the end of their paper, Hagstrom et al. compare the dates they found from their analysis, which are represented by these dots here, so these are the dates from the megafaunal remains, they compare those with the analysis of Cooper et al. from 2015. So those guys estimated the timing of many megafaunal extinctions over the last 40,000 years or so across the northern hemisphere and finding that they correlate quite well with sudden changes or spikes in climate known as Dansgaard Oshka events. So this trace that I'm tracking here, this is the GICC05 line um, data. So this represents Greenland temperatures reconstructed from uh, ice cores uh, and stretched or squashed to fit the Intcal 04 radiocarbon calibration curve. Uh, and these horizontal bars represent the estimated date of extinction of a meg megafaunal species uh, with the uncertainty in their timing represented by the length of the bar. Now these are just a, a representative selection of megafaunal species extinctions. It's not all of them. But notice how the density of these animal extinctions seems to correlate with the dramatic uh, changes in climate with the highest density around the Younger Dryas impact event. So this new work by uh, Hagstrom et al is consistent with coherent catastrophism and suggests that many of the Paleolithic megafaunal extinctions, and not just those at the time of the Younger Dryas impact event, might have been caused by cosmic impacts associated with the Taurid meteor stream. And for those interested in another side to this, uh, and, and interested in prehistoric cave art, uh, this would be a good time to view my videos concerning the Lascaux shaft scene, uh, probably the most famous cave art scene of all, which I suggest records Another one of these catastrophic events uh, in southern France this time, uh, dating to about 15,200 BC and possibly causing the collapse of the late Middle Magdalenian culture in France at that time. So you can find uh, the details of that work in other videos on my channel. Now obviously we'll need to find clear geochemical evidence for each suggested uh, cosmic impact event. But with this work from Hagstrom et al. and the findings of multiple black mats by Pigatti et al. in South America, including one corresponding to the 8.2 kiloyear event, uh, that work now seems to be underway. Well, that was uh, a very interesting paper, but let's move on to the next one. So our next paper is another analysis of ancient lake bottom sediments in Mexico by the Israel de Alcantara group. Uh, but it really doesn't offer much new evidence for the Younger Dryas impact event beyond what has already been published. So of the five different 
ancient lakes that they look at in their paper, only one is shown to have a clear abundance peak in impact spherules at the base of the black mat, and this is from Lake Kutsio. Uh, but this lake was the focus of a paper from 2012 that we re reviewed in uh, uh, part four of this series. And at that time, the radiocarbon dating of this black mat layer from this lake was, was confused by some inconsistent measurements. Uh, but this anomalous age depth model was later rectified in 2014 by the Comet Research Group in their paper concerning the abundance of nano diamonds on three continents. So we already know about the black mat and its impact proxies from this lake, Lake Cuzio in Mexico. Uh, so this new work by Israel Alcantara doesn't offer us much more beyond that. Our next paper is uh, by Andronikov and Andronikova and is also fairly inconclusive. It examines the trace element composition of sediments from two ancient lake bottom sediments in Belgium near Bruges. Uh, but it's difficult to see any clear abundant spikes in unusual elements. The authors conclude there may be traces of elements that can be linked to a volcanic or an impact origin or both. But the signals are not strong or isolated enough to be clear. And they don't analyze the sediments specifically for platinum group metals. So let's move on quickly from that work too. Now the paper by Scott et al is another examination of the sediments from Arlington Canyon. The authors here are familiar to us. These guys seem to be obsessed by this little canyon on this remote Californian island as though it's the key to the whole debate. Indeed, they say it features centrally in the controversial hypothesis of an extraterrestrial impact at the onset of the Younger Dryas. While I think this overstates the importance of this location, it's just one of many locations where the Younger Dryas black mat is found, and due to the five meter cliff of sediment that appears to have formed very quickly at the onset of the Younger Dryas period, it's probably the most difficult location to analyze, not least because the impact proxies seem to be confined to narrow bands within that five meter sequence. Nevertheless, these authors have an axe to grind. Their focus at this site this time is on carbon particles in the sediment sequence, most of which are burned like charcoal. But we are not particularly interested in these as they are not diagnostic of an impact. They can form through natural wildfires as well as other biological processes. In other words, it's difficult to distinguish between fires produced naturally and fires induced by an impact by looking at burned wood and other organic remains. We're only really interested in diagnostic indicators of an impact, the so-called impact proxies, which are nano-diamond, silica and iron-rich impact spherules and platinum group metal abundances. And given this group has a history of selecting samples quite arbitrarily and not from the specific layers at Arlington Canyon found by the Comet Research Group to contain these diagnostic markers, we don't need to pay much attention to this work either. Finally, from 2017, we have uh, this paper by Roper et al. Uh, it examines silica glasses found in the uh, Atacama Desert, uh, which South America, which uh, are suggested to have been formed by a cosmic impact. But considering that none of these glasses are associated with a younger Dryas black mat or any other impact proxies, and therefore are not immediately connected to the younger Dryas impact event, this work is also of little relevance to us. Okay, that's it for this video. The, the key paper of interest to us at this time is the discovery of cosmic impact proxies mixed in with the bones of megafauna found in Alaskan and Canadian permafrost. And dating of these remains indicates several cosmic impact events over the late, late Paleolithic period, the last 40,000 years or so, and not just the Younger Dryas impact. And this is exactly what is predicted by Kluber Napier's coherent catastrophism, and particularly by Napier in his 2010 paper on the Paleolithic extinctions and the Torrid complex. And of course, this cosmic tusk bibliography, even this new version, omits my uh, Fox paper uh, written with Demetrius Tsikritsis from 2017 that decodes Gebekli Tepe, 
in terms of a younger Dryas impact caused by the torrid meteor stream. Probably uh, our paper should be included in this bibliography. Let me know what you think about that in your comments. You can find out more about that from my book and blog, as well as other videos on my channel here.